Hi, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome, you know, all of you to, you know, for, for to, to our webinar this afternoon. And also, I would like to, to thank everyone for, for joining today. And so for this afternoon webinar, uh, we will discuss um, the views and also the perception of institutional investors as well as underwriters in ASEAN region um, on green finance. And also during the webinar today, we will also present to you the results of our green bond market survey. Um, that ADB conducted in collaboration with the Global Green Growth Institute. So without further ado, uh, let me invite Ms. Anshala, um, the Asia Regional Director and Head of Programs of the HGTI for her welcome remarks, please. Um, Anshala, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, dear participants, panelists, ADB and GGGI colleagues. Uh, thank you for having me today uh, to deliver the opening remarks at this uh, Asian Impact Webinar on the launch of the survey report on green bonds and sustainable finance in ASEAN. Uh, as part of my remarks, I would like to mention three key things. First, I want to say that there is no doubt that financial markets could play a transformational role in promoting climate change mitigation and adaptation actions, and primarily by directing investments towards low carbon and climate resilient projects and initiatives through sustainable finance instruments. And this has started to uh, happen to some extent, but uh, not to the scale and speed necessary. The second, in the long term, the development of sustainable finance market could accelerate the flow of private funding to implement nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement and also achieve long term targets such as net zero goals, as well as to achieve sustainable development goals. And I think this can be done through SDG aligned projects and initiatives. And I think this is particularly critical for countries in Southeast Asia region. And the third point I would like to make here today is about today's webinar. And we are very pleased that we have co-organized this webinar with ADB to discuss this very timely topic, which is green bonds and sustainable finance in ASEAN. And the report we have worked on with the ADB lays a strong foundation to understand the landscape and potential avenues for the advancement of the uh, sustainable bond markets across 10 ASEAN countries from the perspective of institutional investors and underwriters. And we believe that this is extremely important to understand the on, on the ground sentiment of this emerging bond market segment in the region and that, and I think uh, it's, a, it's a very, very strong uh, start. In conclusion, let me say that the thematic bond market could be one of the key drivers to mobilize the much needed private finance for climate and green growth actions. Drawing from the conclusions of this recent uh, COP27, where once again, climate finance has been given a lot of importance, the ASEAN economies are very well poised to tap into this fast emerging space. And the time to act is now, and all the stakeholders, including the regulators, need to fasten the seatbelt and to do whatever they can to increase the capital flows through the thematic bond market. And GGGI, and I can say on behalf of ADB also, we are ready to support our ASEAN countries in these endeavors. I wish you a very productive meeting with insightful takeaways uh, from the report, and please be assured of GGGI and ADB's commitment to support these areas of work. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, um, Anshala. And for the next session, um, you know, we will be presenting to you um, the, the survey results um, that we conducted in collaboration uh, with the GGGI. And of course, uh, we would like to take this opportunity to also thank the, um, the local um, you know, financial market regulators, um, the central bank, Ministry of Finance, um, the security regulators, um, you know, as well as to all respondents um, who took part in our survey. Um, you know, this, this, this survey would not happen you know, without your kind support. So uh, without further ado, I will invite uh, my colleague Hian um, to start her presentation, please. Thank you. Hian, over to you. Thank you, Park, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with uh, ADB and GGI to uh, discuss about the um, landscape of uh, green bond market. 
uh, in Asian regions and uh, some uh, market sentiments uh, among investors and underwriters um, in the region via our survey. Um, uh, I would like to host this uh, presentation with my uh, ADB colleagues, Park, uh, who will discuss about the recommendation, and I will talk to you about the uh, survey's uh, results. Uh, could you move on to the next uh, slide? Yeah, first we will start with the introduction. Um, um, this survey report is uh, derived from the survey that was conducted uh, jointly by ADB and GGI uh, between uh, 2021 and 2022. Um, um, the objectives, the main objectives of this uh, regional survey is um, aimed at uh, identifying the key drive, market key, market drivers, uh, market uh, obstacle, and uh, the environment priorities for Asian sustainable finance market. Uh, we, in, in total, we received um, more than 300 um, responses from institutional investors and um, close to 100 responses from underwriters, advisors, and um, others. Um, um, issuers, security issuers, uh, consultants in ASEAN region. Um, the link to this survey will be yeah will be provided by uh, uh, the by May on the box chat. Uh, okay, okay, can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. So, firstly, uh, when it comes to the survey highlight, um, we realize we recognize that there is a a strong interest in the um, overall green bond market in Asia countries. Um, most of the investors and underwriters we talked to have um, showed some interest and um, has started taking actions to, de to develop a plan to engage in this market. Although we rec recognize that um, the divergence, uh, there's a divergence in interest um, across um, more developed um, capital market country and uh, less developed market country. Uh, um, yeah, so, so could we move on to the next slide? Um, when it comes to the optimal uh, investment or issuance size, um, it is uh, clear that uh, among the investors in the region, um, most of the investors prefer a smaller size ticket below 10 million US dollars, um, uh, fewer than um, very few um, investors in the region mostly come from developed market like Singapore, Thailand, prefer a larger ticket size um, between 50,000 to more than a million, uh, 100 million US dollars. Uh, when it comes to the optimal issue in size, um, most of the issuers uh, and the writers prefer to advise on the biggest ticket size between um, uh, 50 to um, 100 million. Uh, US dollars. Yeah. Can you move on to the next slide? Um, we also um, had a survey questions to uh, probing the most uh, promising sectors for green bond investment and in bond, uh, green bond um, underwriting issuance. Um, we uh, recognize that across the region, renewable energies are among the uh, top uh, choices for both investor and underwriter to, um, to engage in green bond market. Uh, next to uh, renewable energies, we also have energy efficiency and uh, green transportation. Some particular sectors are more relevant to some particular countries. For example, the waste management uh, sector in Malaysia or the sustainable um, agricultural sector in uh, Laos or um, Vietnam. Yeah, thank you. Can you move on to the next slide? Um, when uh, we next, we would like to may, uh, discuss on um, some key obstacle that um, uh, inhibiting the development of green bond market in um, the region. Um, um, the key um, issue uh, we identified among the investors in the region is the supply in the adequate supplies of green bond. Um, the most of the investor uh, when surveyed indicated that. Um, they hoping to um, have a better, more stronger supply of green bonds um, uh, from uh, ASEAN countries. Um, on the number one, that's the number one uh, obstacle for investor. Uh, um, well, investor also discuss about um, the lack of um, lack of uh, what's it called? Um, the lack of. Um, Private, yeah, eligible project pipelines uh, as um, a, a major uh, of, um, 
obstacles for the pipeline, for the issuance, for the supply of the market. Um, other than that, um, in among the less developed country, it's about pol um, policy clarity, and among the more developed country, it's about the uh, supply of uh, project pipelines. Yeah, let me move on to the next slide. Um, um, uh, yeah, it's not yeah. Okay, finally, uh, we um, um, want to uh, uh, examine the key drivers for development of green bonds in the regions in the upcoming time. Um, we can see that um, we can see that um, for um, tax in incentive is among the number one um, preference of support that uh, market uh, participants are hoping to receive from the market uh, regulators and policy makers in the region. Um, next to tax incentive, um, we also look for um, policy um, priorities and um, also the standardization of uh, green taxonomy uh, um, amongst certain, uh, especially in less developed uh, market in the region. Yeah. Can we move on to the next slide? Yeah, so in short, uh, the key findings um, we found in this uh, survey um, mostly um, pointed out that the key benefits of green bonds um, highlighted by the respondents um, the portfolio diversifications, the, um, the opportunities to attract new investors, and also the opportunities to integrate and um, the SDG into investment strategy and business operations. Um, and um, throughout the process of conducting the survey, we realized that uh, development partners can play uh, uh, important roles in assisting the market participants uh, with uh, technical assistance program to develop uh, areas that they are looking for um, in the market. Yeah. So uh, coming up is the yeah recommendation for part. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Yan. So. Um, I think based based on the survey results, um, you know, we see that um, you know there are lots of um, interest um, on green bonds or green finance um, among all the respondents, the local institutional investors, um, as well as the um, local underwriters. But I think that the key issue is about you know how to strengthen their capacity, um, how how to make sure that um, you know we can address um, you know both the supply side and the demand side. So um, in the report, uh, you know, we came up with the recommendation areas um, that, that can be categorized into four key areas. Uh, first is on the demand. Second is on the supply. Um, the third um, recommendation is on the, the policy and also um, the um, ecosystem. And the last recommendation is on the capacity, um, how, how we can strengthen the capacity of the local um, intermediaries and also to develop the um, the local talent. So um, on on the demand side, uh, we we feel that um, the local public investors, especially the local pension funds, um, you know, can can lead by example um, because I would say that the market would always uh, want to make sure that whatever they do is as consistent or is aligned, um, you know, with the government policies. And in addition to that, um, you know, international investors, um, especially international insurers, insurance companies, or asset managers uh, from more developed countries um, you know, that have um, clear ESG mandates, um, you know, from their headquarters, would be able to, you know, contribute um, to the development of the local green bond markets in ASEAN as well, especially for those that have operations um, in the ASEAN region. And we also feel that development partners, for example, the ADB um, can also um, you know, be an anchor investor in some of the um, green or sustainable um, you know, bond transactions. And often the case, um, you know, these investors, they don't you know, really invest in the full 100% of the issuance size. We invest only in a portion of it. That's why we call it anchor investors. And the remaining amount can be offered um, to the local investors. So this would also be a way uh, for local investors to familiarize themselves um, you know, with investments um, in um, you know, ESG products. And also um, you know, on the supply side, um, you know, at the bottom left-hand side, uh, we also feel that um, you know, based on the survey results, um, investors um, you know, see that there's not enough um, you know, green bond or sustainable bond supplies in the market. There's not enough you know, bankable project pipelines. So we feel that um, providing concessional finance um, all, um, through um, the de-risking facility 
or you know financial support, um, you know blended finance, you know from more developed countries, would actually help make those projects become more bankable. They would actually help make the bonds become more financially um, viable, um, you know from the investor's perspective. And within ADB, um, you know we have the so-called ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility uh, that was established by the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund under the um, supervision of the ASEAN government, under the ownership of the ASEAN government. Uh, you know, we can also make use of that facility um, that was also, you know, supported, um, you know, by multiple donors as well. And we also feel that, um, you know, financial institutions itself, um, you know, banks um, can also be a major issuer of sustainable bonds. Because, you know, our objective is to make sustainable finance products, um, you know, more accessible, more affordable by all the relevant stakeholders. So banks will be in a good position to provide um, you know, green loans or social loans or sustainability loans um, to their customers you know, who are mostly um, you know, small to medium-sized enterprises. And at the same time, they can issue sustainable bonds to finance those loans. And of course, you know, when it comes to the bond issuance, um, you know, both ADB and GTGI, uh, we have a program um, to help companies um, to issue this kind of bonds. And I think one of the panelists, uh, Ms. Huyen, will also talk about that um, in the next session. And also we feel that um, you know, establishing a relevant you know, practical policy guidance is very important. And again, we feel that um, you know, the um, you know, leading by example or the leadership by the government is super important. Uh, we see that um, you know, there are already so many um, you know, governments in the ASEAN region that have already demonstrated their commitment to SDGs, um, to NDCs by issuing sustainable bonds. Uh, many of them have already done so uh, for the first time. Uh, many of them have already um, you know, regularly um, you know, issued this kind of bonds, both in local currencies or in the international currencies. So I think the commitment or this leadership by the government is extremely important as well. And also the good example by the regulators. Um, regulators are the ones who um, you know, promote green bond market, green finance market, but they themselves also need to demonstrate what they have done. Um, to integrate ESG in their operations as well. And I think the example by the MAS of Singapore um, to publish their, um, the clear set of green definitions, I think this would also give a clear guidance um, to the issuers as well as to the local investors, whether that project is green enough or um, you know, whether um, you know, those projects are not so green. And this would actually um, you know, provide clear guidance um, to both um, local issuers and investors as well. And I think um, you know, we have seen uh, many of the ASEAN governments that have developed their own taxonomy, um, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, I think coming up soon also Vietnam as well. Um, Thailand also have their national taxonomy. I think this is something that we really need. Yeah. And our last recommendation is on the streamlined issuance of um, bonds. Um, you know, many of us, we do not want to put any, you know, un unnecessary additional burdens um, on the issuers. So that's why um, ADB and GTTI, we are here. We have a program to help, um, you know, issuers um, throughout the process, um, you know, in ASEAN to issue the sustainable bonds. And as you might know, um, you know, issuing the first one is often the most difficult one, right? So that's why we are, we are, we are here to, to support you. And, and, you know, believe me or not, you'll be hearing that experience. Uh, from 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 Ms. Huyen as well in the next session, and also um, the experience from um, Alan, who is an underwriter, as well as Jason, who are the investors, so they can share with you um, about um, the um, development of green finance in ASEAN. And uh, second important um, idea is about the development of the local green bond verifiers. Um, we believe that you know having a local verifier who work in the same time zone as companies as the issuers who speak the same language, who understand the local market environment, who can read the local language, then this will be extremely important. And this would eventually make uh, you know, smaller companies um, you know, being able to issue bonds. We hope that having more local verifiers would actually um, help reduce the issuance cost. And we have already worked with um, three local verifiers in the region, um, in Thailand, in Vietnam, and um, in Malaysia. We are developing more um, local verifiers um, in the region. And these verifiers are accredited by the Climate Bonds Initiative as local green bond verifiers. So they will be able to um, you know, bring in international, expert, um, international practices into the local market. That would actually make the bonds more credible from especially international investors point of view. And we also have um, um, suggestion on the standardized you know, bond documentation. This is already um, adopted in some of the um, ASEAN economies. 
Um, so issuers can use the same bond documentation to issue green bond or sustainable bonds in multiple countries um, at the same time. So if they have um, you know, operations um, across the region. So this would actually be a way to help um, you know, accelerate um, the mobilization of private capital um, in green finance. And of course, um, you know, lastly, but I think this most important one, um, both ADB and TTGI and also other development partners, um, you know, we are here to be your knowledge partner. We are here to be your partner to develop the market. So if you think there's any um, thing that you know, both of us um, you know, can, can do to help, you know, please feel free to let us know. The report is published um, on, on ADB website. Uh, there's a link in the chat box. And um, once again, um, you know, we would like to take this opportunity to thank all the le local regulators, um, industry associations, or the respondents um, you know, for, for helping us to, to complete this survey. This is the first time that we do this survey. I'm, I'm sure there are um, areas for improvement. And so we, will, we, we are planning to conduct this survey again next year. And also we are planning to expand this survey to cover um, other um, thematic areas like social and sustainability um, bonds as well. So we look forward to, to your support. Thank you very much. And uh, next, um, I will give the floor um, to Srinath, uh, again, my colleague from TTGI, um, to, to, to start the, um, the discussion. Thank you very much. Srinath, over to you. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Pak and Hien, for the wonderful highlights of the report. So yeah, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, because I've seen the participants list from all across, uh, from different regions of the world. So it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to host and moderate today's panel discussion. And like every other moderator, I too would try to make the discussion as insightful as possible so as to maximize the return on your time invested. And before I jump into the discussions, let me introduce you to my esteemed panelists who are joining us from three different countries to enrich us with the valuable experience from an issuer's, investor's, as well as an underwriter's perspective. Firstly, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Huyen, who's joining us from Hanoi. So Huyen is a member in the Treasury Division at EVN Finance. And in her role, Huyen actively participates in international funding and is also involved in identifying and selecting the use of proceeds for the green projects via financing and refinancing activities. And most importantly, she was part of the deal team which structured EVN finances and also Vietnam's first verified local green bond issuance. So welcome, Huyen. Second, I would also like to welcome Mr. Allen, who's joining us from Philippines. Allen is currently the vice president for BDO Capital. He has more than 18 years experience in the banking industry, of which 11 years was in the investment banking space. Apart from managing a number of debt and equity deals, he worked on the Philippines' first SEC-registered ASEAN green bond issuance and other green instruments. And the third panelist who is joining us today from Tokyo is Mr. Jason. Jason is the head of sustainable investment, fixed income, and senior portfolio manager at Nomura Asset Management in Tokyo. In his role, Jason is focused on fixed income, ESG integration, sustainable investing in the fixed income and credit, as well as green, social, sustainability bonds, and other mainstream impact investment strategies. So as you can see, we've got a panelist with varied experience. And amongst the three of them, if I'm not wrong, they have close to around 30 plus years of experience. And I just have 30 minutes to distill all their experience and give the best for you. So approximately one minute for each of the year. So without wasting any more minutes, let me straight jump to first to Huyen. So Huyen, as a, you've been the first part of the deal team, which actually structured first uh, green bond for Vietnam. So can you briefly tell us about your journey of the issuance and at the same time, highlight any challenges that you have, may have overcome in this journey? Uh, yeah, thank you, Srinath. Um, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, GGGI and ATB for helping me today to share uh, with you all the experiences that we have uh, during the Green Bond issuance. And um, let me start with the idea of us uh, issuing a Green Bond. Um, it just to... Um, the main purpose of it is to diversify our fund funding sources, uh, especially for the renewable and green sector. Um, as you may know, like we we had a, uh, a lot of loan renewable loan. So uh, with the long term, like uh, ranging from seven to ten years. So the need is there. We we need to have the funding source with, with um, to to meet the 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 needs of um that long term loans. So that's why we issue the green bond. And um, let me share with you some of the brief Im information uh, of the bond. So the total volume of the bond is um, 75 million US dollar with the 10 of 10 years. 
and um, it is of course our first green bond and the first partial guarantee bond in, in the local market. And it also the first um, verified green bond, um, which is aligned with the I ICMA green bond principle. So, um, and the process, uh, we expect to use it into the eligible green projects. So as I mentioned, the bond uh, has marked three, the three first milestone of EVN finance and also the local market in Vietnam. So it's the first bond that is verified by the independence uh, verifier. And it's the first partial guarantee bond in the domestic market. And it marked our first you know, partnership with all the insurance, the biggest insurance company in Vietnam. So of course, um, seeing it is the first green bond of EVN finance, the challenges and difficulties is in inevitable for us. Um, and I think like most, most, most of our challenges and difficulties um, were touched by, by Pock in his uh, presentation. So let me just um, start with the first, the first one. The first thing is, um, you know, the lack of the ENS assessment tool um, in, in our company. So during the, the issuance, we, 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 are develop, we were developing the, the ESMS and the ENS policy, um, which has to, you know, to, to meet the international standard and which we choose is the IFC one. And um, however, the, the scope of this ESMS ESMS very limited to, to only you know, renew, renewable and especially the solar energy projects. And currently we, we are developing it in, in order to meet with our, the expansion of our green portfolio as well. And um, however, luckily we, we have the support, we have the support from, of course, from the external uh, advisor on the ENS. So that now I think we, we are on track with, with the ESMS and the ENS policy. And uh, let me move with the second challenge. So, you know, um, as uh, we are the first uh, green bond issuer in, in, in Vietnam, in the local market. So we, we have a lot of difficulties in building our green bond framework as well as, you know, to, to, to apply the very appropriate um, verifier for the bond. So thanks to the support from GGGI, we, 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 we have in hand our green bond framework which, are, which is aligned with the uh, ICMA's green bond principle. And um, this, um, the third one is that um, the, the partial guarantee structure is uh, unprecedented in, in the local market. So it, it, it may um, create a lot of obstacle for us to, you know, to, to construct the, the structure of the bond and um, you know, to, to meet, like to prove to the investor that it's uh, trustworthy and, and it's workable. So uh, we, we receive a lot of support from, from the guarantor. We have the guarantor from, from the, um, as the developed um, financial institution uh, to support us to, um, you know, to construct the structure and, 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 and to make it like um, work, workable at the end. And um, I last but not least, the 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 the, the, fourth, the fourth challenge. I think we we all face it. Uh, the pandemic itself. We all uh, we all face the the, the COVID pandemics. So it may uh, it 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 might like create a lot of a lot of difficulty for us during that time. Like the commitment from the investor, uh, the price of the bond it fluctuate a lot. But thanks to that, like we we will have the bond issue uh, successfully at the I think at the, the quarter two of this year, and it a really big milestone for 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 EVN EVN finance and and I think of course the, the Vietnam local market. Yeah, sure. so that that are some of the brief information about the bond and about how we experience like the uh, when we do the the transaction. Uh, over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuen. I mean, that's a very insightful journey and I'm sure it, the, all the challenges that you overcome and the end result is much sweeter than that. Thank you very much for that. So from an issuer's perspective, we have just jumped straight to Jason from an investor's perspective. So Jason, you're based in Namura in Tokyo. From your perspective, how do you see the whole Asian mar market shaping up? Uh, I'm asking specifically from a thematic bond uh, space. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's great to uh, to take this uh, opportunity to speak with, with the investors uh, and issuers in, in the region. You know, at Nomura Asset Management, uh, where we are um, 
you know, we have a global footprint. It's not, you know, in Japan, obviously, but also around the world. And especially in Asia, um, you know, Malaysia is, is quite a strong market for us. So we're actually quite involved, uh, you know, through our Malaysian and Singaporean um, uh, offices in these local markets um, from a fixed income perspective, which is maybe not so well appreciated uh, and, and known, but uh, it is actually, I think, a, a relative strength of our organization. And so we're quite, we're quite, we're looking with, uh, with quite interest, uh, quite a lot of interest in the growth of the uh, is labeled kind of ESG green social and sustainable bond market in, in ASEAN, where, you know, if you just kind of think, you know, kind of from a, from a big picture perspective, that's basically where the impact is. Uh, we think it's, it's a super interesting area uh, to invest from an ESG investment perspective, because basically, uh, you know, a green bond uh, funded project, let's say for renewable energy in, in your typical kind of uh, ASEAN uh, emerging economy, uh, that's going to potentially have an enormous impact in reducing GHG emissions uh, relative to what we could get uh, for the same dollar of investment in, let's say, a European issued green bond. Uh, so if you think about it from that perspective, there's an enormous opportunity, both for the issuers and for the investors to really make a difference. Um, thinking about how this market is shaping up and what are the kind of the challenges that we face, really, it's, um, you know, we just we just want to see more, more, more green bonds, social bonds, sustainable bonds. Um, so I think that really the, the challenge is uh, getting a bankable stream of um, a stream of you know bankable uh, projects together uh, to put them together into into sizable and high quality uh, green bonds, for example, for us to invest in. Um, also, I think uh, and you know an, uh, another another challenge is uh, is in in some cases the uh, the reporting and just sort of the transparency around these things. Um, you know, we, we know that there's a lot that can be done through green bond and green, fi green financing in ASEAN. Um, obviously, uh, you know, typically the level of reporting and sort of the transparency and, uh, of, the, of the issuers um, is, is not, not quite what you get in the developed markets. Uh, but we think that by engaging as investors with, you know, who are involved in those, in those uh, you know, more developed markets, that we can bring some of the best practices, but with, and I think this is key, with an Asian perspective, um, you know, to appreciate that, you know, what, what works in, in, let's say, Europe or Sweden or something may not necessarily translate directly uh, into the Vietnamese or, or Malaysian context. So we think that we can bring that Asian perspective uh, and, really, and really make it work for investors. Um, you know, really, if I, if I may, you know, as sort of to, to pitch this, this market and, and explain why is it so important uh, to, uh, to, to, to grow the issuance here, you know, if you really think about it, um, you know, issuing green or social or sustainable um, you know, whether it's a local currency denominated uh, issue or hard currency, you know, this really puts you on the map for, uh, for, for international investors. Um, uh, I, th I think that's, that's, that's really something that, uh, that the issuer should, should really think about. Um, and, and maybe there should be more appreciation of that. Um, if it's a conventional bond, you know, then uh, really, you know, it's, 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 quite a, it's quite a competitive market and, uh, and you know, the issuer will be uh, kind of evaluated very very strictly on those on those considerations. Of course, when we involve when we are involved in a green bond, um, you know we're also going to have to make sure that the that the financials make sense, the pricing makes sense for us. But I think that as you can imagine, there's this growing uh, demand, this growing wall of sort of ESG money or sustainable investment money capital that's looking uh, for these opportunities. And frankly, there's it's it's a supply and demand imbalance. So you know get in there. Uh, start issuing those bonds in a high quality format uh, for us to to pick up. Um, you know, another it, thinking a little bit more about how the market is is, is shaping up and, and where we think maybe the best opportunities are. Um, you know, typically in the emerging markets and, and Asia, uh, especially, uh, you know, the financial issuers tend to be the kind of the, the the easiest doorway for us to gain access to this market. They tend to be a little bit higher uh, quality. Um, they tend to be able to, you know, kind of gather those uh, those bankable uh, green assets together and package them up um, into a way uh, that, that that we can invest, you know, as international investors in some size uh, for our for our strategies a little bit more easily and more cleanly. The one thing that I, the one feedback that I would I would give uh, to anyone in this space, you know, please make sure that uh, when you, you know, if, if you're a financial institution issuing as a green bond, um, you know, please make sure that it's very clear what are the use of proceeds. How, how those are determined, how that is uh, kind of managed, um, uh, really, you know, do the impact reporting in a timely fashion in a way that's, you know, it's really kind of simple stuff, but just, you know, very clear on the website in ideally good English uh, for us to check um, so that we can really see that, uh, you know, what these things are being used for um, and, and ideally maybe a more kind of um, 
uh, focused uh, group of, of, of use of proceeds so that we can really have a, a more clear idea what exactly these, uh, these, these, these things are, are being used to finance. That makes it much more compelling for us as an investment. And hopefully, I believe that will ultimately lead to, uh, to more investor, international investor capital flowing into these markets, both in local and hard currency format. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. It's always very heartening to hear from an uh, investor's perspective that there's always a lot of demand out there, but you're not able to meet. So, I mean, from an investor's perspective, I'll switch to the common bridge between the issuers and the investors, the underwriters. So, Alan, like you've been in this space for quite some time and like as, as a, from a securities underwriting perspective, what do you feel is the current level of engagement from the issuers in the region? I mean, do you, do you also feel that there's a real demand from the market for thematic bond issuances or we're just talking of small bubbles here and there and just hypening it up? Yeah. Thank you. So in the Philippines, uh, there is a very real level of engagement from, from issuers. And I think I'm, I'm going to speak about green bonds in particular. So in our view, uh, if an issuer is contemplating a capital market issuance and they have the use of proceeds that would qualify, with a, with a green framework, notwithstanding a higher level of disclosure requirements and potentially some costs that go with it, um, they will go for it. So on our side of the fence, what we're seeing is in relation to the factors that drive issuers, I think um, first it talks about their identity and their DNA. So these guys, if they're a renewable energy company, say like ASEN or EDC, or if they are in the sustainable residential and office developments like Arthaland, they would naturally already gravitate towards a green bond. That's no longer a discussion point when we talk to them. We talk about the price, we talk about the size of the bond, but as to the label of the bond, it's automatically green uh, from day one. So off the bat, they will say that they want a green bond. So second, I think a pretty good common also for issuers is that the use of the green label also enlarges the investor pool incrementally, considering the growing number of investors like, like Jason that have explicit mind mandates to, to invest in green. So for, for us, for our little space here in the Philippines, yes, there is a very real engagement for, for thematic bonds. Okay. Thanks for that. Thanks for that reassurance, Alan. So I'm sure it's not just in internet Philippines because I'll be working with other regions. I'm thinking this slowly, there's a lot of demand that's coming up across all the regions. And now with that, I just go back to uh, Huyen, go back to you from an issuer's perspective, because you've very well highlighted what the challenges that you've overcome in, in coming with the Vietnam's first verified green bond. So is there any particular advice that you would want to share with other potential issuers? Because I also see the question from an issuer that who should they go out, what should do? But is there anything that you would like to share for, or what the is there anything that you could have done differently looking back at things? Uh, yeah, thank you, Shnap. Um, yeah, I think the, the thing that um, I would like to share and I think everyone touched in is, is the green, the green aspect, the word green for the green bond. So I think for us uh, as the first um, issuer in, in, in Vietnam, so um, we, we actually at that time, we, we, we we were not ready with the good green. So anything that I can do differently is that we, we should have a, um, like some in-house uh, policy materials uh, relating to the green aspect. So for example, like I would put the ENS policy and the ESMS and the green bond paperwork as the example. So for us, um, we actually we, we we are developing those kind of materials in parallel with the transaction, and uh, until now, uh, some of them like the ESMS, we we still developing it uh, to to cover all the green um, portfolio that we 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 are planning and we would like to 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 focus in the future, and um, to to speak uh, of that, I think um, to have those material in hands is uh, of course I think and and publish uh, publicly like Jason mentioned for for the investor you know to see to understand about the the issuer is the um, very key point and um, the second thing is that those documents are very important for the verifi verification process of the bond so it is uh, definitely what the verifier is gonna ask when we uh, when they, then they do the um, assessment on how green our, our bond gonna be. 
And um, this, the second uh, the third thing is that um, if we have like the, those kind of material ready in, in our company, so it, it, it should be communicated uh, to all the staff and all the customer. So because um, you know, we, we, we are in the developing country, so um, not, if not ourselves, but also our customer are very new to, to the ESG standard and the, the green aspect. So uh, when we have those um, material communicated to, to the staff and the customer, so everyone will, will be ready for the green, uh, for the ENS assessment in parallel with the credit assessment when, when we, do, um, we, we do the risk assessment on, on the loan. And of course, um, it's it gonna make it like to be more ready for, for the verification process um, uh, in the pre-issuance and, and the post post-issuance uh, of the bond. Okay, I mean, thank you. That's very insightful uh, answer. Basically, it's about the preparation of the documents and the policies beforehand, before you start the journey. Mm -hmm. So I think from there, I move to uh, Jason, also connecting it from an investor's perspective, because from an investor, when you're looking at a potential investment into, a, into the issuer, I mean, what are your expectations? You already mentioned that, yeah, you would like to see some well-written, preferably English documents out there, which highlight their policies and all. I would most importantly, I want to know at what level of the journey, uh, Jason, do you start engaging with the issuer? Because the transaction takes a lot of, uh, at least a month time. So at what level do you start engaging with the potential issuer and what is that you expect from the issuer? Can you throw some light on that? Sure. All right. So, um, you know, for, for context, the main way so far that we've been engaging with these types of issuers is more in the secondary market. Um, and we are typically more engaged uh, and more, more involved in the, I say, uh, you know, larger sizes and more, more probably, uh, you know, established issuers. Of course, in the future, this could, this, this could evolve and we could maybe be looking more, um, you know, into first time or more, you know, primary type issues. But uh, so, so that's, that, that's kind of the reality for us right now, given, given the level of investor demand uh, that we have in local markets. But what I can say, you know, what, and what we, this is a, a global um, uh, kind of framework that we've developed for, for kind of evaluating uh, the green bonds in which we're investing. I mean, first, first comes, we, we do have an, an ESG, a global ESG scoring system. System, uh, which we've developed in-house from a uh, fixed income perspective. And this is applied to every corporate uh, and, and even we have a, a sovereign ESG um, uh, model as well. It's applied to every single uh, um, uh, strategy that we have in, in global corporate uh, and, and, uh, and, and government bonds anywhere. Um, and and it, it does cover pretty much all of the Asian region as well. Uh, so first, we, we will make that check um, to make sure that there are no uh, kind of uh, large ESG risks present. Uh, once that is done, then we have what is called, what we call a net zero um, kind of scoring uh, scorecard. Uh, this basically, we, 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 we like, you know, for when we invest in a green bond, especially on the, in the uh, basically in the, uh, in the developed markets, having a net zero uh, pledge uh, and pretty much having a science-based target for that net zero pledge is pretty much a prerequisite. And we don't just take, uh, you know, the pledge itself, um, you know, as is. We basically drill, you know, drill in and disaggregate that into about 40 different uh, parts um, that we then uh, assess along a quantitative rubric um, to assess really the, the underlying uh, fundamental quality and ambition of the net zero target. So we can compare that in a quantitative way. And then that is also used as a, as a screening function when we're buying uh, green bonds, for example. Uh, then we will also be looking at the, so that's at the issuer, at the, at the issuer level. At the framework level, we also have uh, what is more of a, a qualitative assessment for the, quant for the for, you know, kind of basically a pass fail, and then also a shade, uh, shading, kind of a green, a green shading uh, assessment as well. So in that case, we'll be looking at the individual framework, assessing it against our own set of criteria. Um, you know, there, there are quite a lot of factors that we look at. Uh, and if any one of those is, uh, is, is not, is not met to our satisfaction and it, it will be, it will be, uh, deemed, you know, a fail and we won't be able to invest in that green bond. Really what I can say, some of the key factors in this that we're looking at, especially is around use of proceeds. And, um, there are certain use of proceeds that we feel are, um, uh, you know, for example, certain types of um, uh, operating expenditures that are maybe not very strategic to the uh, to the issuer itself. Uh, in that cases, we will will be a little bit less uh, uh, keen to in, to be involved, and even some of the types of use of proceeds. And this is especially true in, in more more developed markets. But um, 
I imagine it will also be applying to uh, to, uh, to emerging markets as well. You know, there are some cases. Uh, you know, to be quite frank with you, you know, again, renewable energy in an emerging economy is is going to get you an enormous level of uh, kind of impact intensity for do- for your dollar of investment. Uh, whereas a green bond uh, that that basically funds green buildings or something like that, especially in in more of a developed market case where your marginal impact on the, uh, you know, the impact that GHG emissions reduction is quite, quite marginal, uh, that will be less, less favorably looked at. So those are some of the ways that we're looking at this and assessing uh, the quality of the green bond framework. And then finally, and, and this is, I think, kind of, uh, you know, for the future, uh, especially with regards to emerging markets, we're also looking at kind of uh, uh, modeling the temperature alignment of the various entities in which we're investing for these kind of uh, green bond funds or, or, or funds in it that, that are that are highly uh, involved in green bonds. And by this, we can basically take the current level of, um, of emissions, uh, as well as the net zero target uh, and kind of the commitment level and the trajectory of the emissions based on that target to basically back out using um, sectoral uh, carbon budgets. What is the kind of quantitative uh, temperature uh, you know, uh, change uh, that, 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 that that issuer is aligned to, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, 1.5 or 1.7 or 2.2 or, or 3.5 or something like that. Uh, and then basically, if that's aligned uh, to the Paris Agreement or not, then that will also be another factor that is considered for when we invest in, in the green bond. Now, that's quite a lot of, of, of hoops to, to jump through. And that's, we think that by kind of using a layered approach, we can, um, you know, avoid uh, risks and kind of cover uh, various types of risk scenarios uh, in an effective way, in a comprehensive and systematic way. Um, you know, there may not be so many emerging market uh, issuers that can kind of uh, meet all those criteria today. But um, again, it's something that we that we that we think is very important, and we're happy to look and looking forward to the opportunity to to you know discussing these issues, you know, bringing our perspective as a global investor to the market, and and saying this is really the thing that we think that you should focus on. Um, you know, in, in forums like this to highlight those uh, those important factors for, for international investors. So hopefully we can raise the overall quality of the market uh, for us to invest in. That's kind of how we're looking at this at this market. Okay, uh, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Jason, before I move to Alan, I just want to address a point, direct one a question from the uh, audience. Like from an investor's point of view, what do you see as the key challenges in investing in emerging markets? I mean, you've already captured that, but in brief, if you can just address and edit it here. Yeah, um, I mean, there is a little bit of a perception, I think, in certain markets that uh, you know the green bond market is a bit of a of a money grab. Uh, uh, you know, now we see a lot of a lot of people, a lot of issuers getting involved in this. A lot of countries, um, in some cases, uh, the quality of the of the frameworks and the quality of the assurance uh, that we have in you know just exactly what these these this financing is being used for. Frankly, I mean, it, it's just you don't have a very high high, high degree of assurance. Um, and that makes us a little bit wary from a reputational perspective. I mean, we've seen in the in the recent past that there have been a couple of, um, you know, again, green bonds are supposed to give you better transparency. So it doesn't really, it's not really a great look if if the green bond issuer then kind of goes bankrupt in, in a year uh, for some sort of enormous governance problem. So those are some markets and some issues that we are very concerned with. Um, and of course, you're, you're typically dealing with less liquidity, um, you know, less less transparency. Uh, um, in, into the business model. These are all these are all aspects that you know. In a, in theory, the green bond format can actually help us overcome. I think in reality, it's been a bit of more of a mixed bag. But um, really, just kind of again to kind of focus on the positive aspects, green bonds. Uh, you know, it, it's a way to it's a way to kind of um, you know showcase yourself as an issuer to a much wider array of investors. I mean, I can't tell you how many new invest uh, new new issuers I've come across and learned so much about. Uh, you know, in, in in our research into this market, ones that I would never would have had a second look at if it was not uh, for the fact that they had a green bond or a social bond that we were that we were interested in analyzing. Um, so that's what I'll say about that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks, Jason, for highlighting the challenges in that. And I think from that, it's a perfect uh, match for me to bridge for me to move to Alan. When you're saying that from a underwriting's perspective, how difficult? Because you already heard heard from both Huen as well as from Jason as to the how difficult are the challenges that they need to do, uh, they, they need to overcome to issue the green bond. So from an underwriter's perspective, like how difficult is it for you to under and sell a thematic bond or the conventional bond? And most importantly, do you think it is worth the extra effort and investment? Because that's yes. something that we come across a lot. 
Yeah, so so Shina, I would have to agree with, with Jason. I think um, having that green label there uh, generally increases the visibility of your offering. Um, so in relation to investor appetite, I think there, there really is no downside in using and going for a thematic bond approach in using a green bond label. label. The issuers that have done so have mostly found the additional time that they have spent in developing a framework and engaging a second party for, for the opinion. Uh, they have found that they have been re rewarded with commensurate investor in interest. And I think the caveat here is that a green label is not a be all and end all, that just because you have a green label, you necessarily would then merit a triple A spread. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, what I'm saying is that whether you are a new issuer or a veteran issuer in the capital markets, for example, there is a benefit to you uh, in issuing a green bond because it it provides uh, more visibility uh, to your offering. It enlarges the investor pool for you. And hopefully it translates to, to drive uh, tighter pricing for you uh, in whatever um, life stage or or stage your company is in, whether you are beginning or you are already mature with very strong cash flows. Thank you. Thanks, Alan, for a very reassuring uh, answer on that. And I think as we are running short, we just have eight minutes. I'll just go back to one common question for all the three panelists. And this time, starting with Alan, just being neutral. So uh, from an individual organization perspective, Alan, what do you think are the top one or two things that could be done to deepen the thematic bonds market and most importantly, make more capital accessible for the climate friendly projects? Top one or two things. Yeah, so I think top one, uh, we already have uh, an incentive program being developed by our central bank uh, to, to incentivize green investments. And I think the second one would probably be more quality of life improvements while our SEC has been very proactive in relation to supporting green bond issuances, I think some differentiation like a longer validity period for registrations or priority lane in relation to filings that would be very helpful already. Thank you, thank you, Alan. So, and uh, Jason, before I uh, hear your views on that, can you answer just before the one top thing that needs to be done? I have, we have one question from the uh, audience on what is your view of the local governments issuing green bonds? Yeah. Um, I mean, local government issuing green bonds in a hard currency or local currency format, I think, is, is a very positive step. It shows that there's a very high level commitment um, at, at, the, at, the, at the highest levels uh, to sustainability. We take that positively. Uh, you know, we have, like I mentioned, we have our own um, ESG sovereign uh, uh, scoring model. Uh, so we, we do think about and, and, and you can see, actually, in the region, there have been countries that we've been tracking for over the past decade, even, you know, you can see how how governance has really uh, improved in some of these countries and, and how the, and the ones that have really embraced, I think, sustainability and how that can be really be, you know, a strategic, um, you know, opportunity for their for their economies. That is something that uh, that really pays off, frankly. For investors so uh it's a very positive step and, and we like to see those sovereign uh, uh issues they tend to be high quality for the market and, and set the benchmark now what you mentioned about um you know what what do we need to see uh i believe you know really it's about more i mean certainly the quality of, of green bonds i mean always can be can be improved and the quality of um uh the reporting and such that's always important i think that what we really need now is just more 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 of these bonds a bigger pipeline of of bonds and for that i think we really have to think even beyond just the green but also think about social and sustainability and even transition at some point um you know we we know that uh you know there are sort of a limited set right now of bankable projects for just for green but if you expand that scope uh, let's say to social and then you know you can you can sort of uh, put them together as sustainability bonds um you know i think that that really just widens this uh the, the the playing field for many more types of issuers many more companies uh to to become involved in this space in a meaningful way and as investors that's super important for us because not only do we want you know attractive uh financial returns from the bonds that we invest in we also want to be able to invest in a diversity of issuers so that we can build diverse portfolios that are not just you know con super concentrated in let's say financials and and power companies for example as, as tends to be the case with the green bonds so really you know my, my word to the to the market would be you know as an issuer think about what is really the kind of 
core factor? What's, what's core and fundamental to your business model um, from a sustainable perspective, whether that's green or whether that's social, you know, build a framework around that, really highlight that, uh, that quality to the market. And then we can, we can see, um, you know, that this type of investment uh, is really going to be, you know, fundamentally important to your business model. I think that gives us a lot of confidence uh, to invest in those issues. And we, because we, we, we do make a difference between the sort of, you know, those types of issues that are that are issuing sustainable investments linked to the core business underlying business versus those that are sort of like a me too type of type of framework so i'll leave it there thank you very much thanks thanks for that uh jason so and uh, coming back to you and the lot of one or two things that you would want to see from an investors issuers perspective oh uh, i think for me is a of course a very clear definition on the green aspect and as well as the very harmonized global standard that should be applicable for all the uh, issues com coming from the developing countries because we we are way more like lower ac acknowledgement and accessible uh, accessibility to to the um the uh, ens standard uh compared to to the developed country and um i think uh the thing is that we not from the um from the uh, part of us, but also from the local um, authorities, uh, from the government, that uh, there should be a, a very clear uh, local standard or, or regulation that is applicable for, for ourselves and other issuers in, in Vietnam, as well as in the developing countries. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, so I think with this, uh, I will wrap up the panel discussion. So thank you, everyone. And I sincerely hope that I did justice to everybody's time who invested in this. Now I hand it over back to Pak. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Srinath. And thank you, um, you know, all, all the panelists. Um, I think I can see um, you know, a few um, you know, key points uh, you know, that we discussed. Uh, first is that you know, not just green, but also um, you know, other sustainable bonds, um, social bonds, sustainability bonds, um, you know, um, SLB, transition bonds. I think this is a way to go, all right, uh, for, for, for many of the um, potential issuers and also the investors. And most important point is that um, we also need to communicate our sustainability strategy, not just within the company, as Ms. Huyen mentioned, but we also need to communicate that um, to all the stakeholders um, as well, our suppliers, our customers, our investors, and also um, you know, our regulators. And I would say, um, you know, issuing green bonds, um, the cost of issuing green bonds will reduce over time. Right, um, the money, the marginal cost will reduce over time because um, the framework that you develop, you can use it for your second issuance or for your third issuance. I'm sure, um, you know, once you issue the first time, um, the second um, issuance will make your life much easier, right? And once you issue the third time, um, it will be just like conventional bonds, right? Um, but at the same time, you will also be, you know, attracting um, you know, new investors like Jason and also. Um, you know, once our um, local underwriters become more familiar, um, you know, with this kind of bonds like what Alan has done, you know, lots of work on this, um, I'm sure we will see more and more supplies um, in the market. And also, I, I think that, um, I think all, all the um, panelists, um, you know, mentioned that um, the support from the regulators is very important um, on this area. So, you know, with that, um, thank you very much um, the, um, to, to Srinath, our excellent moderator, as well as to all the panelists. So um, this comes to the end of our discussion today. Um, I would like to take this opportunity um, to invite um, all the participants um, to join us um, you know, um, for our next um, Asian Impact Webinar on December 5 um, at 3 p.m. Manila time, the same time as today, um, to explore how digitalization can help business to be more innovative and also to support job creation. So please join us and also um, you know, please um, you know, feel free to register using the same link. Um, you know, with that, thank you very much to all the speakers um, and also to all the participants um, who stay with us here today until the end of our webinar. Um, until then, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.